What are microinverters and how do they work? Is the question I asked Mark Bowman of IES. Okay, uh, microinverters are relatively new technology. Uh, the idea is that as opposed to having a centralized inverter, and I guess we should back up a little and talk about what does an inverter do. An inverter's purpose is to take the direct current power, the DC power that the photovoltaic system is producing, convert it to alternating current, which is what a facility or a home is going to be using. So that's the method of converting that is through the inverter. It's a required component within any solar power system. When you think about the pros and cons of microinverters versus centralized inverters, think about how they're installed and why. A centralized inverter is going to be larger. It's going to be sized suitably for a a, a solar power system. So for example, in a 4.2 kilowatt system or a 4200 watt system, you're going to get a, a centralized inverter that can handle that type of wattage. In a microinverter situation, each individual module, so let's say a 175 watt module, is going to have its own inverter placed near or actually in some cases on the module itself. So in essence what you're doing is creating a module that produces alternating current directly at the module. Uh, from a technical standpoint, when it comes to designing the system electrically, it offers some benefits because you don't have to worry about some of the issues associated with string sizing. So what string sizing uh, offers is a little bit of uh, solar origami on the roof trying to fit the right number of panels with the appropriate orientation, pitch, and azimuth, and your strings are groups of panels. And when you use a centralized inverter, each string has to be within the same orientation. When you do AC mo modules with a microinverter, every panel is producing its own AC power, so there's absolutely no requirement for string sizing. So when you think about what would be some of the, the reasons why you might look at a microinverter would be in a specific case where you have a roof that's very chopped up, small triangular sections, or there's obstructions that create shading where you need to put modules maybe off by themselves, or you can't group them in appropriate string sizes, then it opens up flexibility for the photovoltaic layout and design, where someone with uh, a chopped up roof who didn't have access to a microinverter, they actually might not be able to go solar, that could be one of the downsides, or they'd have to go with a more limited system. With the microinverters, you can put panels almost anywhere and you can um, just design more flexibly. How big are they? Uh, a microinverter, uh, it's about five inches by five inches, maybe an inch deep, a little bit less. And it mounts underneath the panel? Uh, you'll typically mount them in most scenarios right on top of the rail system. Um, there is a module out there, the Ondelay AC, uh, that has the, the inverter actually attached directly to the bottom of the module itself. But any way you look at it, the inverter is going to be located right there uh, next to the module. So how did the, the inverters then string together, then go to a then down to the electrical box? They actually they still have or to go all home run to the back to the electrical box. They still connect together. Okay. And they don't have to string the same way. And we'll probably be getting a little bit beyond my technical knowledge to say exactly how you string those okay. together. But there is still a box that manages that power, that AC power, to ensure that it's going to meet the requirements and parity of grid electricity when it reaches the panel itself. So there still is an intermediate component, but it's much less expensive than an inverter. But let's not forget that you paid for each microinverter in an increased cost at the panel location. So overall, in, in my experience, a microinverter project, if we were to look at some of the pros and cons, is going to cost s somewhat more. And it will vary by manufacturer and um, by integ solar integrator, but it's usually going to be more expensive than a centralized inverter solution would be. Um, there are th those that would say that a microinverter uh, design system might have a little higher production rates. And that would be one of the benefits, but how you actually calculate that, validate it, and put it into the internal rate of return formulas um, would be something I'd pay really close attention to. Okay. And um, once again, if you have a site condition where you have issues with layout, there's a really good, there might be a good opportunity for the AC or the AC panel or a microinverter. Um, on the other hand, if you have a very open roof and good access to the south sun, um, and if the string sizing is not an issue, from a cost perspective, a centralized inverter uh, might be less expensive. But also from a maintenance perspective, when you think about access and how do you perform maintenance, 
whenever uh, whenever something fails on a photovoltaic system, which is unlikely, I mean they're very stable, the modules themselves it has been proven technology for, for decades now, um, but when something fails it's typically going to be with the inverter. So in a centralized inverter you have one inverter located a couple feet off the ground, you can walk up to it and you can perform maintenance and servicing. On a micro inverter scenario you're going to have one per module, which means if something's going to fail and if it's typically going to be a micro inverter, it's going to be up on the roof and it's going to be underneath a module and you're going to, that service call you can imagine becomes a little more complex. First determining which module it is, which microinverter it is, and then accessing the microinverter for servicing. Um, the technology is a little bit newer, although I do believe it is robust at this point. It probably will become more so over time. Those are still considerations to take into account.